And before we get to all of that, let's take a look at the highlights from and, today's ball game. And I'm here for the highlights. So here we go. And Lafayette, uh, you know, they played well. But again, the up top three times in the first five plays, Holy Cross went to the air. That time they hit Boker down the sideline for 42. And then you see Oliver, he's going to finish that off for Fuller getting in the end zone. That's that 7 nothing lead. And Karasia came back. Lafayette got the football back. I'll tell you what, Sean Davis was really, really impressive today. Chris Karasia on the back shoulder throw. And there's the punt block right in the last two minutes of that first half. That block again by Haskins. He's going to not only block it, but catch it and run it in. And he does take a bow, and he should. At that point in time, they're up 17-7. to But then Lafayette got this man going, Jaden Sutton. He had 100, almost 100 yards rushing in the second half, finished with 132. And again, a trick play right here from Lafayette. Stewart's going to give it over to, uh, to Smith. Smith throws it back to Stewart. And Stewart's going to take it in for the touchdown. Lafayette cuts into that lead, and it's 17 to 14 as they ring the bell on the sideline. Then Malik Ham and his defense came to play. Malik with a big sack, a 16-yard loss right there to Saluka. They're going to punt the football. Lafayette does get the football back. And going into the fourth quarter, you were hoping Lafayette could turn Jaden Sutton loose. He picks up a big first down here. And then obviously Curtis, he's going to get the hand fake, the RPO. What a catch. What an absolute beautiful catch by Carl Smith right there. One-handed back shoulder makes the play right in front of the defensive back. Lafayette takes the lead. It's 21-17. And then Lafayette gets an interception from Preston Forty at midfield. So they have the ball again. He rings the bell. Lafayette again, they're up. Here's a third down play in six, which was not a catch. I'll still say it wasn't a catch till the day I go in the grave. And then a fourth down and 17. Shorter catches the ball over the middle. Poorly played by Lafayette's defense. And then Lafayette backed up against the wall. Watch this ball gets tipped up in the air again by the uh, uh, Reichwine. And then you see Short, uh, Haskins come in and make the play. But Lafayette, it's going to be tough, tough, tough as Marco Olivas. You can see we are a good football team. He's telling these kids, and he's letting them know we're going to battle until the end. And you can tell that's what uh, he is indeed saying. The passion of Marco Olivas is beyond just about anybody that plays the game, that's for sure. As you look at some of the numbers, some of the things that really stick out, time of possession, Lafayette 36 minutes to 23. Plays in the ball game. As you look at uh, the yardage, the 181 yards passing, 329 for Lafayette. Check it, total yards. Megan is ready down on the field with John Truxell. Here is Megan. Thanks so much, Gary. Well, Coach, you pointed out to me at halftime you're going up against the number six team in the nation. To lose to just three to them, how do you build off of what your team did today? You know, I mean, I think, you know, we showed a lot of heart and passion and, you know, I mean, the, the kids fought, you know, I mean, obviously we made some mistakes that killed us in the end. And, uh, you know, we just got to, as I said to them, you know, if, you know, that's the best that this league has offered. They've taken down some FBS programs. We're not far away. We're getting better and better each week, which for us with some young kids is actually really good to see. So our, our best football is still ahead of us. And we know that. And talking about getting better and better each week, your offensive line, how did they take a step forward today? Oh, you know what? I mean, obviously in, the, in this bye week, they worked hard. We got a little bit healthier in the sense of their, their bodies getting healthier. And you know what? I mean, and they fought. And that was what we were asking them to do, you know. And, you know, getting Jaden back and having Oshawn back, obviously those guys played really well too. So uh, credit, to, credit to the offensive group. You know, they came out and fought. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much, Gary. Well, Phil, I'll start with you. Gary and Mike were just talking about how this Lafayette defense is special. How Absolutely. did they show that tonight? Well, you see it, right? Yeah. Uh, you see it in the score. You know, I think, you know, looking at the score, 24-21, you would have said if, you know, you would take that before the game, right? Mm -hmm. But not in these details. I mean, look at it. We dominated in almost every fashion, you know, defensively, offensively mm -hmm. as well. Uh, it's just an inadequacy, inadequacy of our special teams, basically. Yeah, offensively, what do you build off of moving forward, John? Uh, yeah, yeah, you and I talked a little bit about yeah. this, Megan, a little while ago. I'm uh, is shock the right word? I mean, our <laughs> offensive line yeah. was dominant. This is an offensive line that has been depleted by attrition. I mean, the injuries, uh, you know, we've had, had guys step up. Um, it, it's just been under fire all year long, and they rushed the ball for over 160 yards today. I don't know that we've had 160 yards all year long. Mm -hmm. So time of possession that's related to. I love the way Ashawn uh, Davis was able to manage the game. And even more than that, he made some terrific throws. So we came as close to complimentary football as we've 
had all year long, and as Phil noted, but for the uh, uh, the blocked punt, uh, it, who knows what could have happened. Mm -hmm. Well, going off of talking about Ashawn a little bit, Phil, we saw his arm today for sure. Yeah. What are the biggest strengths that, that you really did see from him today? Well, I think, again, you know, what we talked about a little bit at halftime was, you know, he's coming in just like he did as a freshman. Yeah. Uh, I think it's what the play, the plays that they're giving him, the ability just to make those short throws. He's very efficient at those. He's very good at those. Um, and then they're moving the pocket as well. Uh, but you're also seeing him uh, with a little bit more of an ability to run the ball as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Coach was talking to me post-game about the fact that if Holy Cross was the best that the league had to offer, he's really pleased with where his team is at. How pleased are you, John? I'll start with you with what Lafayette really put out tonight. Well, that's the thing. This is a Holy Cross team that came in ranked sixth in one poll, mm -hmm. nationally ninth in another. So it's a top 10 football team. And, uh, it was almost reminded me of the original Rocky movie yeah. where, you know, they take the first shot. <laughs> yeah. And then we did something that upset mm -hmm. them. This was a, a game between two teams that appeared to not like each other very much. Yeah. And that only happens when you feel threatened. And I think once Holy Cross felt threatened by this Lafayette team, uh, it just started to snowball. And I loved what I saw out there. This is a building block. I know it's a loss, but John Troxel and his staff, they've got a plan in mind. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, it was, uh, uh, we, we got a glimpse of it tonight. Yeah, and you could cer certainly see the fight yeah. that these players had for Coach Troxel. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think you'll see that to, to continue, and especially yeah. coming off of this game. You know, it gives them a lot of hope that they can stand up. And, and, and again, just a very winnable game, a game that we really should have won yeah. had it not been for, you know, special teams, I would say. Looking ahead now, Georgetown next week. What do you what do you think about that? I was thinking about it halfway through the game. And number one, how good do you want to be? Yeah. All right, you re you realize you can do it now, but sometimes the uh, you know the, the reward for any kind of success mm. is that you have the opportunity to do it again. Mm. And it, you can't you got to let this game go now. Even the positives from it, let this game go. Patriot League games are ahead of us. Uh, it's a big one next week against Georgetown. And as Phil said, I think there's some promise here, but only if you take it one game at a time and put forth this kind of effort next week. Well, you heard it right here. A big game next week against Georgetown from John Leon himself and Phil Eng. I am Megan Caffrey. We can't wait to see you next week.